Hey guys, it's Dr. Adam Nelly uh, coming this evening. Uh, it's later in the evening on a Monday evening, and I thought I would jump on and do a Facebook Live. Um, and uh, I'm here at the office. They're doing some some service on one of my lasers, and so I thought I would just do a live on keto adaptation, what that means, talk a little bit about that, and why it affects a weight loss stall. Um, for those of you that have never uh, done ketogenic diet, and as you sign in, I'll, I'll probably wave at you here in a second, but thanks for joining on. Um, share this out if you like to. I'm going to post this on my YouTube channel uh, when it's done. But uh, let me tell you a little bit about who I am. I'm Dr. Adam Nally. I'm a board-certified family physician and a board-certified obesity medicine specialist. Um, and I work in Surprise, Arizona. I've been, been, practiced, been practicing medicine about 20 years. been in private practice in my office for about 18 years. Um, one of the things that I find uh, is a lot of people don't understand keto adaptation. If you start, just started a ketogenic diet, you're probably going to lose weight really effectively. And I have a lot of people that lose between 5 and 15 pounds every month for the first three months. And all of a sudden, they plateau out. Uh, and nobody can figure out why. And uh, all the keto experts have all these different reasons for it. And then it comes down to really three, two or three different issues. Um, number one, uh, initially, as you're losing, as you're shifting your diet, uh, you, if you've been using a standard American or following a standard American diet, your body doesn't have the ability to absorb fat as efficiently as it, as it does carbohydrates. And it can take some time to do so. It can take some time to, to shift into that keto adaptation phase uh, and, to, and to, to shift there. Um, that, that adaptation phase can take anywhere from a one to three months for some people. Usually it's about six to eight weeks, uh, so about two months in total. But it can take up to three months in some people. And so what you'll see is that as you're not absorbing fat as efficiently, but you're, but you're eating less carbs, you'll actually see no, notable rapid weight loss. And then as your body becomes really efficient at absorbing fat uh, and you upregulate the ability to, to, to take in fat, if your fat intake is too high um, and your insulin level never comes down adequately, which is, happens to a lot of people who are insulin resistant, that weight loss will come to a, a screeching halt. Um, and the, the reason is that when insulin stays high and you now have really well uh, uh, fat, you uh, really uh, nice packed triglyceride in your in your uh, in your uh, cholesterol molecules. Let me back up a little bit and explain. As fat's absorbed into the gut, it's a, it passes through the gut wall and it turns into what's called a chylomicron, which is essentially a big fat bus um, it, that carries triglyceride and cholesterol inside of it. And as it shrinks down, you'll, it'll turn into LDLs. It'll take you take the liver and turn into VLDLs. Uh, it, can, it can be turned into HDL, which a lot of us are familiar with those terms. Well, basically those are buses that are carrying triglyceride and, and cholesterol. And as those buses are, are traveling through the blood stream, there's a little hormone called lipoprotein lipase. Now, if insulin is high, insulin causes that lipoprotein lipase to be bound to fat cells and the triglyceride and cholesterol is pulled into the fat cell. If insulin is low, um, then it won't go into the fat cell very effectively. As glucagon goes up, which is the counter-regulatory balance mechanism for insulin, uh, meaning that there's not a lot of sugar present, uh, that, that chylomicron will bind to skeletal muscle and um, mus uh, muscle, and, and the fat will be pulled into the muscle, so it can be used by uh, muscle uh, tissue. And that, that occurs when glucagon's higher. Now, if you're really insulin resistant and you're now keto adapted and you've got fat coming into the system, but you've not lowered the overall insulin loads because you're still using sweeteners or teas or things of that nature that keeps the insulin levels high, you actually won't see those fat cells shrink and you'll actually hit a plateau. Um, and that usually happens somewhere between the second and third month. And then people go, Dr. Nally, your diet sucks. It doesn't work. And it's, it's, it's not working for me. And so one of the challenges that happens is that you've got to, you actually have to um, keep that insulin coming down. Uh, and that's where fasting got its popularity because fasting actually forces the body to raise the glucagon after a period of time and you actually see an improvement in, in that weight occur. Now, um, depending on the type of fasting you're doing, you can see success or not see success. Um, the first step I tell people is that it, excess fat that you're putting into the system is usually not needed. If you eat um, red meat, bacon, eggs, those molecule, those, those foods are essentially one-to-one -one in their, their protein to fat ratio. Now that's per gram, not by calories. Um, if you calculate the calorie in an egg, um, you know, there's seven grams of protein and seven grams of fat. Well, if, if the fat is nine kilocalories per gram and the, and the protein is only four kilocalories per gram, you've got roughly 60 to 60, 70% fat in that egg. Similarly with bacon, red meat, and pork, they're roughly somewhere between 60 to 75, sometimes 80% fat, just the way the good Lord made them. So if you're eating them and you're eating real food, you're already at 60 to 70% fat intake. But if you're slathering your, your, your steak in butter, if you're adding MCT oil or butter to your coffee, you're actually pushing the fat content up even higher and you're making more availability for fat uh, in that bloodstream 
And if your insulin is still slightly high, you're not going to see weight loss. You're going to see that without that end of the fat cell and that fat cell can never shrink. And so it never goes down. So what, what we want to do is we want to back out the fat out of, out of coffees and, and things of that nature. We want to decrease things that will stimulate insulin. So sweeteners, I wrote a whole, art, a whole article in, the, in my book, uh, The Keto Cure, about which sweeteners spike insulin. Um, we know that leaf-based teas, that's your black tea, green tea, and oolong tea, these teas actually spike insulin, and especially in someone who's insulin resistant, those teas will actually keep the insulin level high and make it harder to let the fat out of that fat cell. So those are all some things that, are, that play a role. Um, but that's usually why people plateau at about week, month, two to three, and if we don't change up the way that fuel is coming in, because of the way the body changes its partition of fuel to fat cells, skeletal muscle, and, and other components of the body, you won't see that fat level drop off. So very, very important to understand in the first few months, and, and a lot of people um, were, you know, were shocked that you can eat a tremendous amount of fat and still lose weight. But then when you hit that second or third month, you plateau out because you now are adapted, meaning you've upregulated receptors in both the gut and the and the, the rest of the body to absorb fat more efficiently. They're called MCT receptors. Um, and now you're, and if your insulin levels are still staying high, we, we won't see that fat partition correctly. So when insulin's high, fat enters the fat cell effectively, and it doesn't enter the muscle. When insulin's low, it doesn't enter the fat cell, it enters the muscle more effectively because of what lipoprotein lipase does and its signaling mechanism between insulin and glucagon. So those are some things to understand. And they're, they're a bunch, but again, it's hormonal. It's not caloric. And a lot of, a lot of those keto experts out there um, who, who complain that us, us gurus um, don't understand what we're talking about with calories. It's not a calorie issue. It's a hormone issue. Um, that's why I, I, in a lot of my lectures, I talk about you know what, do, what, what hormones are being released at different blood glucose levels because your blood glucose level plays a big role on what hormones are being released. And those hormones play a role on where that triglyceride and cholesterol goes, whether it goes through the fat cell or whether it goes to the muscle and the heart to be used effectively as fuel. So hopefully that gives you a little clarity in the, in the you know, seven-minute uh, explanation on, on what is keto adaptation and why does that why can that cause a, a weight loss plateau so thought i would uh, talk with you about that it looks like there's a bunch of people on 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 board here i'm going to scroll through some questions and see if i can answer a couple questions here before i close out and before they finish up working on my laser here in the office um hello from dallas and people people all over the place um so someone says, you're basically topping off your tank. So this is Dara. She says, you're basically topping off your tank every day instead of burning the fuel that's already in the tank. You can think of it that way. A lot of people say, you know, you're, you, you have, if you burn the fat in your stomach before the fat in your fat cells, that's the problem. The issue is that the fat actually circulates through the whole system. And if you measure the fat that enters in, that fat's absorbs anywhere between one and three hours. And that fat hits the, the, the bloodstream. And then based on the insulin levels or the glucagon levels, you're going to be cycling that, that fat in the chylomicrons either into the fat cells or into the muscles, and you're going to be pulling from the fat cells if the insulin is low enough to pull from those fat cells. So, so the key is not just lowering the insulin, but it's lowering the insulin, raising the glucagon slightly because of the way your body's, your glucose levels are at, and because of your, your activity level, if you can maintain it, and diminishing the overall fuel coming into that tank um, as a whole, if that makes sense. But yeah, that's, it's, it, 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 the short answer is yes. Um, let me see if there's anything else. Hello from Louisiana. Um, let's see. I'm in your neck of the woods, says Ingrid in Arizona. Hello, Ingrid. How are you? Um, let me just see. We've got Robin and Christy and Ann and Mandy, John, Susan, uh, Dara is here are with us, April, Albert, Cindy. I'm just looking to see if there's any questions from any of these guys. It's great to see you guys. Um, Tom is there. Hey, Tom, how are you? Uh, that's me. Need to lose the next 10 pounds. Yep. And so the key is if you're keto adapted, it's time to start backing the fat back a little bit. Uh, we want to maintain protein. So you know, keep the carbs under 20 grams per day. We want to maintain protein levels. And we talk about that in the book. And I, I put that on my blog so that you can find those protein calculations are there for you. And then we want to, we want to keep the fat content somewhere between, you know, 50, 60, 70% fat. And you can do that just by eating real food. If you're adding extra fat to things, then that's where people get a little, uh, it gets a little tricky and we can actually see problems that way. Um, let's see, weight stalls, uh, weight stall times one year. I'm over oh, it stalls for a year. I'm water and electrolyte fasting until you lose 20 pounds. So Tammy, the nice thing about fasting is that short-term fasts actually increase glucagon, allow for that weight loss. But the challenge with long-term fasting, longer than a week or two, is it actually turns down the thyroid and slows the metabolism. And there's actually somewhat of a permanent effect to that. So um, I'm not a big fan of the real prolonged fasts, um, but, but if we're doing cyclical intermittent fasting, we find that's actually very effective. What I have a lot of people do is we cycle where we do two weeks of intermittent fasting. You know, we use skip breakfast and have lunch. 
um, and then uh, and then two weeks on rehab breakfast. And we find that that cycling actually resets the fat set point and still maintains the, the normal thyroid function, if that makes sense. Are there any supplements or medications that help this? Well, yeah, I, I use berberine all the time. Um, I don't know if I have it here. Uh, I use berberine all the time with my patients because berberine, uh, very effective in, in helping the insulin sensitivity. Um, I designed a vitamin. If you go to ketoliving.com, you can check out the vitamins, the berberine that's there, that we use that. Um, that's a great, great, uh, I, I recommend that with m most of my patients who have any insulin resistance at all. A bunch of people who have become fat adapted think they need to go back to low fat. Um, Mandy, that, that is the, the worst thing that you can do. Um, the problem is this is this, you've got a bunch of trainers out there that were, were indoctrinated into low fat. And once you keto adapt, when they fail, they go, oh, you got to go back to low fat. Well, that is actually not the case. What we got, we need to do is we have to modulate the insulin, come down and bring that glucagon level back up. So we add a small amount of physical activity. Um, we, we make sure that the fat content is not too high. We, you still need fat for fuel, but we want to just bring it down and even a small decrease in the overall amount of fat, meaning you're not putting extra butter in your coffee or extra, you're taking out the MCT oil and the heavy cream out of your coffee, you're doing those kind of things. That, those are all fabulous ways to just decrease that fat content just slightly. And if, if you can walk, if you can do so, just something physically, physically activity, uh, this is where we actually see an improvement in that uh, uh, glucose control and enhancement. The berberine actually helps to stabilize um, the insulin levels. It brings that insulin down and also helps as well. So great, great question there. I don't know if that cleared the air or not, but let me know if there's another question on that. What, what is your explanation difference postmenopausal women? Okay, so so step number one, Faith, is you got to lower the insulin load, and you got to do that through keeping the carbs low. Uh, number one, number two. Um, we have to maintain thyroid function. And if your insulin's high, it actually suppresses thyroid. If you're doing too long of fasting, um, it can actually slow or suppress the thyroid. Um, and so then three, in a postmenopausal woman, you actually have a decline in the production of progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone. Well, you have to remember that estrogen and, and testosterone play a huge role in opening up one of the doors in the back door of that fat cell. And if you're not producing enough testosterone, um, and if you are not creating bile appropriately through the, the, uh, the conversion of T4 to T3, the, two of the five back doors of the fat cell never open up. And so in a postmenopausal woman, we actually find that they struggle with weight loss because the progesterone is not high enough and their testosterone is not high enough. And oftentimes their estrogen is too high and uh, because of the, 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 the maintenance of an estrogen dominance that arises. And that's a whole other topic, but that's really what happens. Hello, Marnie from Utah. It's good to see you as well. Um, Am I sabotaging myself by eating no carbs? Not necessarily, Dara, um, but there's one issue that I find with a lot of women who are estrogen dominant, if they don't have any phytonutrients from a, a small amount of leafy greens, their estrogen can stay too high. And in the long run, they can actually see some changes in estrogen dominance. So I, I'm, I, I tell people a little bit of leafy green works fine, but no carbs on and off is great. Um, and that kind of addresses the carnivore lifestyle. Uh, I, 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 you know, if you actually, if I talk to some of the people who claim they're doing carnivore, um, they're just eating a very small amount of leafy green periodically, um, and that's actually enough. I, I don't, I don't buy into the whole giant, you know, cut everything out except for meat issue because there are some components in the leafy green um, that I think um, uh, make life easier um, and, and make it so you don't have to chase down the grass-fed uh, cow every time you're wanting to have a steak. Um, so you know. I'm all about ease of living and um, better living through chemistry. And so if that can happen because, you know, and I can, I can find foods in my grocery store that are cheap and, and also um, uh, make life easy. I'm all about that. What about low carb for Marfan patient with aortic root dilation? Nicole, that's a whole, that's a very, that's a very um, uh, specific issue. Again, you're talking about a genetic a deficiency. And so in regards to a ketogenic diet, you're going to see diminished inflammation and diminished, um, uh, uh, hormonal uh, anomaly that, that can be that can drive some of that Marfan change but the challenge with Marfans is that that's a genetic deficiency in regards to growth hormones and things of that nature um, you're not going to change Marfan's disease but you can improve some of the uh, inflammatory changes that arises there and that's what I have with a couple of the Marfan patients we have in my, in my practice hey Angelique how are you uh, info about menopause in the book. Uh, unfortunately, no, we didn't address the menopause very directly in the book. Um, that's probably book number two. Um, hey, Tracy, let's see. Postmenopausal hormone replacement. I'm a big fan of bioidentical hormone replacement. Uh, which leafy greens are the best? The ones that are leafy and green. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, all right, great questions, you guys. Uh, let me see if there's any other questions I missed here. 
All right. Hey, Angelique, let's see here. Thought I would jump back on here since I had some time. I was waiting for a, a, a repairman who's working on one of my lasers. And so I finished up charts and, and thought this is a question that keeps coming up. You know, this, this weight loss stall issue and why do we stall? Um, you know, is it because we're eating too much fat? Uh, and the answer is not necessarily, the answer is not actually too much fat. It's the amount of fat based on your hormone response with both insulin, glucagon, and those kind of things. And so if you're just signing on, uh, flip back and watch the beginning of this and we can, we can let you see it. Um, good stuff. I'm keto carnivore right now. Cool. All right. Wonderful. Let's see. Tell me about keto and brain cancer. Oh, that's a whole other topic there, Kay. Um, I, I actually will do a live on that coming up here, but I can, what I can tell you is that, um, many, many uh, forms of cancer are driven by high carb diets. Um, and those cancer cells, uh, have the ability to thrive in the, in the presence of glucose and they don't thrive in the presence of ketones as their primary fuel. Um, but I'll, I'll preface it with that and we, we'll do another live another time with that one because that's a whole other topic. All right. Any other questions? If not, um, I'll, I'll give it a second here. How do I get bioidentical hormones? Tracy, you need to talk to somebody or a doctor who understands how to use bioidentical hormones and, 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 and uh, understands uh, how to compound them and how to, how to obtain them. Um, many doctors understand this. Um, some don't, but many do. Uh, the reason I'm a big fan of the bioidenticals is that uh, the, the pharmaceutical company can't patent a hormone ident that's exactly identical to your progesterone or your estrogen. Um, so the, and because they can't patent them, they'll make a different chemical like a progestin, uh, which acts like progesterone in the lower half of your body, but doesn't in the top half of the body. So a lot of women who are on, um, uh, you know, uh, by, uh, synthetic forms of progesterone, which are called progestins, um, one of the common ones that's in the Mirena IUD or things of that nature, um, those progestins don't cross the blood brain barrier. So people can get hair loss and uh, decreased cognition in the brain. Um, they get, they get fatigue. Uh, they can have depression and anxiety arise because of that. So, uh, one of the things I've found over the last you know, 20 years in practice is that when I switch people over to bioidentical hormones, I see a resolution of a lot of those symptoms because now women can access true progesterone and use it for all the components that the body needs, not just hot flashes. Uh, and control of, of periods uh, because the progesterone uh, progesterone in itself comes from cholesterol conversion and then that turns into testosterone cortisol uh, hormones for your adrenal glands uh, as well as estrogens and so it's important to actually have a real true progesterone not a synthetic for those components all right let's see here uh uh, please come back on Facebook Lives, Tammy. I'm 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 trying to figure out how to how to do these in the most efficient way. Um, so whether it's Facebook Live, Instagram Live, or just popping them up on videos, I've been starting to roll some of my videos right to YouTube. What I'll probably do is take this video and put it up on YouTube for people to see it uh, a little later. Let's see. I'm two years keto, but last few months fasting glucose rose to 118. Added Jardians now um, 78 ketones five to seven. Would like to act once again. I'm, is that a question or that's a statement, Bob? I'm not sure what that means. Um, let's see. My neurologist uses keto on his pediatric epilepsy patients. We've used keto for, with epilepsy for many years. Can low carb shut off hormones to suppress growth hormone of Marfan? No, it cannot. Um, G-Y-N, no. I, I don't know what gyno means. Uh, are you asking the question, does your gynecologist do bioidentical? You'd have to ask them directly. Um, all right. Should we on a, be on a probiotic? Only if your gut needs it. Let's see, stalled for almost a year and a half, added back a few carbs, an apple or grapefruit, in addition to leafy greens, best avenue for monitoring hormone levels in postmenopausal women. Um, the most effective way to check your hormones is through a salivary test, um, but they can be expensive and they're usually not covered by insurance. So a uh, secondary way would be through the blood, but through blood, you're kind of ballparking. Um, we do both in my office, and so that's something to consider. I don't take anything now because I don't want all the side effects. I just deal with the horrible hormones and hot flashes hysterectomy is to have ovaries. Uh, you, you, Tracy, you may consider talking to your doctor about bioidenticals. Uh, all right, let's see. 33 hysterectomy, progesterone and estrogen need estrogen to be sane, hit a wall. Uh, so Emily, you're one that we would want to look at. Where's your insulin? Where's your thyroid? And then where, where are all your female hormones? Because, and, and you want to correct them in that order. I find that you got to correct the insulin first. If you don't correct insulin and you try to fix the thyroid, Thyroid usually doesn't get totally corrected. If you have high insulin and the thyroid's correct, but, uh, and, but, and you haven't corrected the insulin and you try to fix the female hormones or the male hormones, it doesn't usually work. You gotta fix the insulin first. 
you gotta, you gotta get the right diet on board. Once that fixes, then you gotta fix the thyroid. Once you fix your thyroid, then you can fix your, your female or your male hormones. And hopefully that will help. Um, but that's the order I do them in. So, all right, you guys, it's great to see you. Thanks for joining on with me. Um, I'll roll this over to YouTube uh, once it once it posts and it'll be there as one of the, uh, the videos on YouTube. Hopefully that helps out. You guys have a great evening. Uh, I need a book for older women with different challenges. Yes, Faith, I do. I, I'm actually, I've actually got part of the chapters in my head right now and we'll be putting on on paper hopefully soon. Uh, you guys have a great evening. Enjoy yourself. Remember to keep the fat high. And that doesn't mean add extra MCT to your coffee. That just means eat uh, foods that are high in fat. Keep the carbs low. Moderate your protein out. If you don't know how to do that, check out my book. It's over here. Um, and uh, Or go to my website, docmuscles.com. You can find my YouTube videos at youtube.com backslash or forward slash I say dr nally dr nally is where my youtube videos are I'll check them out there um you'll enjoy those i put as many of them as i can in the past up there so you can use them as references you guys have a great evening um and uh stay out of trouble and and enjoy your bacon have a good night guys take care bye bye